Okay, so seed plants, chapter 31. I'm going to talk about the evolution of seed plants. We'll get to gymnosperms and the four kind of phylums that are underneath gymnosperms. And then hopefully we get to angiosperms, which are the flower and plants. And then probably tomorrow we'll finish it with seeds and fruits. All right, so the evolution of seed plants. What are the advantages of seeds? And then distinguish between pollen and sperm and seed plants. Okay, so seed plants, they pretty much affect every aspect of our lives. Um, we use them for pharmaceuticals, food, okay, fuels, building materials. There are some that actually produce material for clothing, the plant-based, um, environmental quality, kind of cleaning up the environment. So, you know, seed plants, they're pretty important. But we needed to have some modifications for these seed plants in order to, for them to succeed as land organisms. So we're going to see a continuation of the, the reduction, decreasing in size of the gametophytes. Talk about the seed and its uh, advantages, and as well as the evolution of pollen. So no more spores, we're gonna have pollen here. Seed plants evolved from a species that they're gonna call progemnosperms. So pro means before, and then gemnosperms um, or means naked seed. So these progenital sperms, they were spore-bearing plants. They had secondary vascular tissues. Some of these species had leaves. The secondary vascular tissues is extremely important because now we can increase in girth or width. So with vascular tissues, we could grow vertically and transport nutrients and water great distances. But now if we increase our base, now we can grow even taller. So secondary vascular tissues allow us to grow in width. When we compare sequences and analyze it um, and put together a phylogenetic tree, it shows that there has been a number of gene duplications. Um, and so from gene duplications, new genes with new functions or forms um, resulted. And we talked a little bit about gene duplication, I think, last our last unit. So just to show you where we have gone, okay, we started with bryophytes, where the sporophyte was dependent on the gametophyte. You can see it's parasitic, sitting on that gametophyte. And then with ferns, uh, we had a large sporophyte and a small independent gametophyte. And the dominant life cycle was the sporophyte in all vascular plants. Um, the gametophyte is free living. It's out on its own. There's no attachment between the sporophyte and the gametophyte. It's not dependent on the sporophyte for nutrition, so it's kind of independent. And now we are going to transition to a reduced gametophyte. In fact, a lot of them are going to be small, microscopic. Um, that is dependent on the sporophyte. So it's kind of a flip, if you will. But the gametophyte is really, really uh, small. Okay. All right, so what do seeds do uh, for a plant? Protects the embryo. That's the, the baby plants inside of it.
So the next slide, I'm going to show you the anatomy of a, of a, a seed. Okay, but um, it starts off with an embryo protected by layers called integuments. If it is a gymnosperm, it will just be one layer. If it's an angiosperm, it will have two layers. And when you have integument covering the embryo, that's called the ovule. So then within inside the ovule, you'll have meiosis occur, producing megasporangium. The prefix mega is going to um, be for females, okay? So megasporangium to produce haploid megaspores, basically eggs, okay? So these megaspores, they'll go through mitosis, they'll form the female gamete, the egg, and then somehow pollen will occur, um, and we'll talk about different ways that this happens, but fertilization occurs, and now we have a diploid zygote, and it, will, it turns into a young sporophyte. And that's basically what that embryo is. The embryo is a sporophyte. It is diploid. It's, you know, a zygote is one cell, but then once it starts to go through mitosis, now you have formed an embryo. And another cool thing about seeds is not only do we have this, these layers of protection, the integument on the outside, but we also have a food supply on the inside that the embryo can use. Um, so seeds can lay dormant for years, you know, and then germinate when conditions are right. So, yeah. So here's a diagram um, showing the seed coat, okay, the protective layer on the outside, and then in green is our embryo, and then in yellow, that's the integument, or not the integument, uh, the endosperm, um, the food supply. I don't think I mentioned endosperm, but you will see that term in this lecture, um, but yellow is the, the food supply. Over here is the gemnosperm, one layer of integument here in um, blue, whereas over here, angiosperms, two layers of integument over here. Not only that, angiosperms have an ovary wall because they produce fruit around their seed. Gemnosperms, they're called naked seed. So you can see why gemnosperms are called naked seed because we don't have another layer outside of this uh, seed here. So with seed plants, we cut ties with water. We don't need water to transport that male gametophyte to the female gametophyte in order for fertilization to occur. Everything before this required water because the spores or the male um, sperm had flagella, they were flagellated, so they'd swim to the egg. But here we are cutting ties. And we're gonna use other mechanisms um, for that male gametophyte to join with the female gametophyte. Now in seed plants, all seed plants are heterosporous, which means that there are two kinds of gametophytes. And so the male gametophyte is actually the pollen grain. Pollen grains are multicellular, um, and basically it's the sperm of, of that plant, or that, of that organism. I'm gonna show you some really cool pictures of sperm or pollen grains. Um, they actually have like wings, buoyant wings, so they can kind of float with air currents, but they can be carried by wind, as well as a pollinator, insect, bees, flies. When they land on the female gametophyte, some of them travel through a, 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 a structure called a pollen tube. So instead of swimming to the egg, they go down something called a pollen tube. And this, this is where we eliminate the need for water. And I mentioned on the previous slide how angiosperms um, will cover their ovule and uh, put a, basically a seed. The, the ovary becomes a, a fruit around the seed. And we don't get that with the gemnosperms, and that's why gemnosperms are, are going to be your naked seeds. Nice. Okay, so moving on to gemnosperms. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about some features of gemnosperms and then list the four groups of living gemnosperms. So here are my gemnosperms, and we're gonna talk about ginkgos and the genetophytes and conifers and the cycads. Um, and then if we get into angiosperms, great. But 
little bit of a background with the general sperms. So there are four groups, the coniferophytes, um, cycadophytes, genetophytes, and the ginkophytes. Oh, and that's supposed to be a parentheses. All lack flowers and fruits. We don't have any flowers or fruits, just naked seeds, okay? Um, flowers and fruits, those are angiosperms. That's supposed to be a parenthesis. The ovule of the um, sporophyte, um, the ovule will become the seed. It's exposed. And, um, you know, basically, gemno, sorry, can't think here. Con nope. What am I trying to say? Gemnosperms, sperms, um, they're like cones. Okay, so pine cones. Those, those are the seeds. And so you can, you know, pull them apart, and they're actually made up of scales. And the scale is actually a modified shoot or a leaf dependent on the species. Now, there are some discrepancies um, when it comes to reproduction and growth, like the, the cycads and the ginkgo do have motile sperm that somehow move. Um, but all sperm carried by pollen tube to the female gametophyte, and then the pollen grain, um, yeah, will fuse with that egg. Uh, so of the four groups, you are probably more familiar with the conifers because uh, you just see more of them. And there's actually, of the four, the greatest number of species. I think there's over 700 um, species of conifers are pretty close to it. But your conifers include pines, spruces, fir, cedars, hemlocks, yews, larches, um, cypresses. They also include the tallest and the oldest. So the coastal redwood wood is the tallest living vascular plant at 100 meters. So 300, oh yeah, 300 feet up. The oldest living tree also found in California um, is the bristlecone pine. And so they have discovered that there is a tree that is 4,900 years old. Conifers have some unique adaptations to them, and you're going to see that on the next slide. But you usually find conifers in colder, temperate areas, sometimes drier regions. And conifers are pretty important to us because they're sources of timber and lumber, biofuel, feedstock, paper, resin, and then um, uh, taxol, which is a drug used to uh, fight cancer. So let's take a look at some specialized structures in conifers. Uh, they have tough needle-like leaves, and you usually find these needles in clusters of two to five, and they're the only um, gemnosperms where the leaves are clustered. The leaves also have a very, very thick cuticle and a recessed stomata, which means it's just really, really small, or maybe, I don't want to say non-existent, but it's really small to help minimize water loss since they tend to grow in temperate and drier areas. I mean, 
mean, you find pines or conifers in areas where the topsoil is frozen for parts of the year. So it's really hard for roots to get water. So whatever water they have, they want to make sure that they keep it and not lose it through transpiration and other processes. Now, a lot of conifers out there will secrete risen, or kind of like that sappy, sticky stuff, and it keeps insects away, also fights off fungal attacks. Some, some um, species, we actually harvest this so we can make turpentine, or we'll harvest the solid risen um, to be used on bowed string instruments. I don't know if you know this, but um, I used to play viola when I was younger. I used to be a part of an orchestra. And so um, before, I, before you play, you would always, you'd have like this little block of risen and it had like a little, it looked like a hot dog. I mean, like you, had, you had like a covering on the outside and then it was exposed to the risen and you just take it and you rub your bow with it. And then it just kind of makes it glide over the strings um, better because so, otherwise it gets kind of scratchy and so it just kind of makes it glide, and makes it sound better. So. Some uh, conifers are hardwood or softwood, and I'm sure you guys know that pine is a pretty um, soft wood. It's something you, you know, if you're gonna work with pine, gotta be very careful because it dents easily. Um, but we also notice that there are some gymnosperms that, or conifers that have thick bark, and the purpose of that is to protect them against fires as well as sub-zero temperatures because a lot of times forest fires will occur in these drier areas. I just, I don't know why I'm thinking California, but you know. And that's, it can be a good thing because some seeds, they don't open unless they are exposed to heat, AKA fires. So fires are just a part of the natural life cycle of gymnosperms. So there are some species where they depend on fire in order to open up the seeds um, so they can re reforest the burned areas. Okay, now the reproductive structures of conifers, we have pollen grains. And they are developed from the microspores, which is found in male cones. So we do have male cones and female cones. And the male cones are, they tend to be fleshier. They're not hard like the females, female cones. So the prefix micro um, is male. So we have a microsporangia that forms as sacs within each little scale, as you can see here. And we have these microspore mother cells that undergo meiosis and form microspores. And you can see here that um, this is, these are the four microspores after, so it says becoming four microspores. And these microspores will turn into a four-celled pollen, one, two, three, four, kind of looks like a Mickey Mouse hat. And the two ears at the top, those are the, the air bladder. Makes them more buoyant, um, be lifted, carried by wind. We'll talk about the female side on the next slide, but you can see that it's from the hardened scales. Um, this process can be kind of confusing at times, so I do have a diagram, but the pollen will fuse with the megaspore and um, form, there's the pollen tube uh, on the inside here. They're really, really small, but it'll get to the egg and fertilization will occur. Now we have a zygote, which turns into our embryo and eventually it will turn into a pine seed that will germinate and become a very large sporophyte. So the female pine cone is larger, the scales are harder, they're woody.
So if we take a look at this picture here, it says at the base of the scale, we have two ovules that will develop into the nacellus, and you can see that here, one and two. And then the nacellus is surrounded by an integument layer, so this outer layer right here. It does have a small little opening here called the micropile, or pile, I don't know how to say that actually. Uh, this integument will become the C-coat. We have a megaspore mother cell within each megasporangium um, that will undergo meiosis, producing four megaspores, and eventually it turns into a female gametophyte. I'm not exactly sure if I'm really going to quiz you on this. I may have a diagram of a life cycle, and you just might have to identify diploid, haploid stages or something like that, because this gets like really messy, especially when you get to fertilization right here, because this whole entire process takes like over two seasons for it to happen in order for them to actually mature. So you'll see a coloration change in the, the female seeds going from reddish, purplish to green. The scales will open up. At the end of each little scale is a micropile, which secretes some type of sticky fluid to catch the pollen grains that drift through the air. And then once it lands on that micropile, um, the scales will close up. And we are still not mature, so this is kind of like the start of fertilization. Um, while the pollen is traveling to the nacellus of the egg, um, the female gametophyte is still like maturing. And then, then to kind of throw you even, you know, to make it even more confusing, the pollen grain that's in the pollen tube actually goes through mitosis and turns into four cells. And the last two cells act like sperm and the first two cells, they do other jobs. So yeah, it's complex, it's crazy. And it's actually crazy how they know this, so. So I'll show you a flow chart of this. Uh, one side is male and one side is female. Okay, so this is the male side and this is the female side. So we'll just recap male because that was the first thing. We have a pollen cone and with the microspore mother cells that go through um, meiosis to produce the pollen, okay? And then um, they will be released and um, fertilize, land on the micropeel and form a pollen tube. Female side, we have an ovulant cone or a female cone where inside we have the megasporangium and the megaspore mother cells that go through meiosis and um, pollination occurs. So pollination and fertilization is not the same thing, okay? Pollination means that it has landed on the female part, but it still needs to travel to the egg. So the female gametophyte will mature while this, the pollen is traveling to the egg. Um, and then once it does meet, now it is mature, we have a zygote that turns into a seedling, which can turn into a sporophyte. So this is um, a male, pine cone shed in its pollen. You can easily do this um, just by shaking a tree and you can see the dust in the pollen grains being released. And if you were to do a cross section of it, you can just see all the tiny little um, pollen grains on the inside of it. Oh, all right. Uh, microscopic picture of the winged pollen grain, okay? And then these are the females where it's fleshy and you can see the colorization and a cross section of that. Um, yeah, I guess I'll pick up right here. I have a couple more colored slides, but I guess we'll stop right here.